Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick White here. Uh, just interviewed with Google and Ancestry, so that's pretty fun. But um, yeah, we're doing the Java series on HackRank still, so we're doing this Java 1D array uh, question right now. So an array, this just talks about arrays. It's going to teach us about arrays. Pretty straightforward. If you don't know what the arrays are, you're probably a beginner, and I'm going to kind of hopefully fill, fill this in. There's things called data structures with which hold data and data types. We've gone over data types like ints. Uh, there's a bunch of different number data types, ints, double, uh, doubles, floats. Those are some numbers. You could have strings. That's a data type. Uh, characters. That's a data type, etc. And we could store these things if we want to save, you know, say we have, um, you know, we're playing a game and we want to save user scores, then we might use an array. Uh, so we have, this question is Java 1D array. It's going to explain it right here. An array is a simple data structure used to store a collection of data in a contiguous block of memory. Each element of the collection is accessed using an index. Uh, the elements are easy to find because they're stored sequentially in memory. So there's order in these arrays. Um, so if we had a list from 1 to 10, we could store each element as a number from 1 to 10, and we could access them by an index. Um, and they'd be stored in order, right? We'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You could sort arrays, and you could do a lot of manipulation with them. So because the collection of elements in an array is stored as a big block of data, we typically use arrays when we know exactly how many pieces of data we're going to have. For example, we might use it to store a list of student ID numbers or names of state capitals. Um, to create an array of integers, name my array that holds four integer values, you would write the following code. So we do type of array, name of array, equals new type of array, and then in brackets, the size of our array. You could also declare an array in um, a few different ways too, but we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, this sets aside a block of memory capable of storing four integers. Uh, an integer is stored as a cell uh, assigned a unique index ranging from zero to one less than the size of the array, meaning the in this value, if we stored the integers one, two, three, and four, uh, index 0 would store 1, index 1 would store 2, index 2 would store 3, index 3 would store 4. Um, in the case of my array, we could store integers, and you could set values like this by accessing the index, so this would make the last value equal to 12. Um, that's just to change values, right? So what's our problem here? Well, here's our task. The code in your editor does the following. It reads an integer from standard input, saves it to the variable n. If we look down here, we're, we have a scanner class with standard input, we take an integer n, then we close the scanner, and then we're going to loop through our array, which we haven't created yet, and print each element out. So it reads n integers corresponding a to 0 to a to n minus 1, uh, and saves each integer a of i, attempts to print each element. So write the following code. Create an array holding n, uh, size n integers, and modify a loop so that we read in all of these integers into our array. So this is pretty easy. Uh, first, we're going to just follow what they told us above. So we're going to do int a is equal to new int with the size of the array, right? So now we have our array is initialized, but there's nothing in it. So how do we read input? Well, all we have to do is loop. So we loop from i equals 0 to i less than n, i plus plus, just a simple for loop. And then we just do a of i is equal to scan dot next int. So the a of this index we want the element to be in is going to take in a new integer. It's all going to be perfect. Really easy problem. Basically, this is just to understand array concepts. Um, so hopefully you guys are kind of understanding how your data structure might be used. Sorry, it's next int. I can't believe I messed up on this. I always mess up at least once. But uh, yeah, obviously reading in integers is next int. I don't know why I said that. No semicolon and no method call. Dude, it's so embarrassing. I It's like I almost want to redo this problem just because I messed up like that. Obviously, I know how to read input to an array. It's super easy. You know, I don't have... Sorry, this is a bad video to put up. You know what? Let's be real, though. People make mistakes. I'm going to put it up anyway. Hopefully, you guys don't, you know, think I'm stupid. Even though that, that was just so dumb. Anyone can do that. I'm so... I just interviewed at Google. So, I don't... I just did, Pat, and I have, I got a perfect score on the coding challenges. So, you know what? I don't have to prove myself to nobody. But, I mean, that was that was pretty bad. Okay, but um, another way to initialize an array might be, like, int um, a, if you, ha if you know what values you're going to put into your array already, 
you can do this. So if you know it's going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4, you can just initialize it just like this. So this is just another way to do it. And, um, you know, that's that's what an array is. Hopefully you guys, uh, anyone who's a beginner might have, um, you know, learned something from this. Uh, taken away that I'm a dumb, I'm pretty dumb and uh, maybe watch, but still watch the rest of my videos anyway. Thanks for watching. I don't know where I'm going with this, but, um, you know, that was bad. But um, thanks for watching. I'll do better next time. All right. See ya.